What's going on folks? This is Jagos and we're going to be talking about the gaming industry and we're going to be talking about the backbone of the industry which is the developer. Now a lot of you are probably coming into this with the conception that gamers are the backbone of the industry and unfortunately that's not. We're the financial backbone of the industry far more than the publishers who don't sit here and invest into the industry. But the backbone of the industry is someone sitting here deciding to make work, do something different, and make a video game, no matter what kind of game that you play. AAA industry, indie industry, you even have Loot Gamer that is showing that there is a market for, you know, adult games in some way, shape, or form. The fact of the matter is, and I'll sit here and contest this with anybody that's listening, the main thing you have to sit here and look into is the developer. The developer is the backbone of the gaming industry. They sit here, they produce all these games, they cr translate all of these ideas into various different avenues and resources for people to sit here and enjoy in some way, shape, or form or capacity. We have a number of developers that have done a number of works in all sorts of things. Right now, one of the biggest games that I play is Soda Pop Dungeon, which is uniquely made by a developer, not a gamer. Gamers are good for critique, they're good for criticism, they're good for understanding what is going on, or sitting here and going left, right, or whatever. But someone has to always take various ideas in the real world, translate them into a video game. That's why I sit here and contend that developers are the backbone of the gaming industry now what I'm gonna sit here and say and talk about is the fact that with developers they have a number of challenges a number of things that go on with them that make it very difficult for anybody to sit here and really understand all of the things in front of them the main thing that I've seen is that there is a difference between triple A industry developers as well as indie developers that sits here and doesn't get translated all that often with regard to the type of infrastructure that developers are in or anything like that we'll start with the AAA and I know a lot more about EA as well as Capcom being traditional gaming industry places and I'm gonna compare those to say Valve which is more unconventional AAA is mainly about getting a profit and then that profit being translated into work for the developers to sit here and create in some way, shape, or form. What I mean by this is EA does not create a game. They go to a developing house such as Maxis to create the SimCity franchise which they're known for even though the developers that have been working on the title since the 90s is not necessarily there and have moved on to different things such as Will Wright for example. Again, this is just an example so if I get this like not 100% you realize the what exactly what I'm saying. But the point of EA as a publisher is to sit here and produce get profit, get money. What a developer is doing is trying to sit here and make money to make more games usually these two things are at odds so you'll see that there's going to be clashes of ideals and clashes of what games are going to be made and how and why when there are decent clashes like you know it's just constructive in some way shape or form maybe a publisher may not understand every last aspect but it's seeing okay you have a good vision but we want to sit here and make a game that is more cohesive and we'll give you more time to sit here and do that sometimes you can actually get a good game out of it but most of the time a publisher is not going to sit here and look into things like that what they're going to do is look at the bottom line try to make money as quick as possible damn developer vision and if they have a lot of money invested into a into a house in any way shape or form they're going to sit here and do things that are not in the developer's interest. For example, Activision. What did Activision do after Modern Warfare 1? 
Frank Zampella and Frank Ward and Z Ward and Zampella. I, I will go with that. Ward and Zampella were the lead developers of Modern Warfare One, but they passed all their milestones on Modern Warfare One. It was a very very strongly uh, gang, uh, strongly well received game, and the fact of the matter is, Bobby Kotick knowing that he had to pay money out in bonuses he decided to sit here and go after them saying that they were spying on the enemy this kind of pushed them more towards ea than they probably would have gone and there is a very very antagonistic relationship between the publishers and developers that can be shown in that type of relationship the developer was doing everything that they were promised and support it but unfortunately as can be seen the one that ended up losing out was the working developers that basically lost out on the bonuses as well as the resources that they had to create the, mo the newest modern warfare now as of now Mo Bobby Kotick is no longer with Activision but he's made plenty of money in doing these types of underhanded things um, if you look at one of my older videos, I actually go more into Activision's history as well as how their history is entangled with Warner Brothers where they have some CEOs that come from a movie or other type of background because they have a similar structure themselves. Um, I would recommend that you all look into that video. I do a much more um, formal argument had a script and everything but this is just more informal work so you don't have to take this as gospel truth in any way shape or form the main thing that I want to sit here and and stress if you're looking into the developer you have to look into the AAA and see that the developers are kind of fighting each other in which publishing house that they want to be now this comes out to they get more wages by being in better companies that sit here and uh, appeal to them more uh, right now if you look at different developers they have different reputations EA may have a horrible reputation with everything but sports but they're still a decent developer of certain titles as well as they're trying to sit here and build up their diversity brands such as the mirrors edge which is pretty horrible because nobody is liking the first person parkour titles as much because of different because of different reasons far more than just Anita Sarkeesian it's just this game concept is not fully thought out and they're just trying to sit here and appeal to people people's fancy and fantasy about something that they didn't, didn't necessarily want before but they're getting it now when the market has changed entirely especially with VR and everything else so I don't know much about the Mirror's Edge series. I still haven't played the first one. But the fact of the matter is they are trying to appeal to certain groups such as Dragon's Age, Mass Effect, and they're also going into the FIFA titles and everything else to try to give it some story mode. But they're not necessarily doing the things that would be more lucrative in the long run such as say a coach series edition of Madden and everything else that people might find appealing in some way shape or form this is not necessarily about EA again so what I just wanted to sit here and go into the AAA real quick the developers what they're doing is they're trying to appeal to different ones so SJW Blizzard they have good titles that are been built up for the last 20 years those are the types of things that make them these different triple a type um, publishing houses far more lucrative for a developer to stay with as well as learn and build and grow into the vast different teams for example rockstar had eight different teams working on gta 5 and they're doing rather well and it's a pretty stable type of company because they own a lot more of their own resources versus ea that is more profit driven so there is less work and more stress on the developer to sit here and constantly churn out games this is what pretty much killed bioware as well as popcap 
you all know about these things. I'm not going to go over them again. I've gone over them in the past. I've sat here and talked about the Sim Shitty fiasco. So we'll move on from there. Now, another way that developers can organize is by organizing themselves. If you've ever heard of the Valve Handbook, I recommend looking into it. It's not necessarily working as well as it used to, but it is something that is kind of a model that says workers can sit here and organize and decide what they want to develop and what they want to work on. You have things such as Ice Frog, who is basically helping and creating most of the Dota 2 content, which keeps them pretty lucrative and pretty entertained and fashioned with what they like, what they don't like. I've played Dota 2, not necessarily my game, but I can see the appeal. I like that a lot better than I do League of Legends, and there's a lot of corruption in League of Legends. I'm not going to get into that at the current point in time, but the point is developers can work, decide what they want to work on. Now this is coming up right now as Valve is coming into this idea of most of their people have decided to work on the VR machine or whatever they have in terms of VR and I'll have the links in the underbar but the point here is the developers can can decide with the resources of Valve that they want to work on what they want to work on so they have various different teams that work on say the steam sales various different teams that work on the publishing the studios and everything else they still don't have a dedicated team to customer service which really really sucks but you can see that there are some strengths to it where they decide what's best for them is less stressful they get to do a lot of work and the develop and for the most part they're making about as much money in billions of dollars as EA so don't say that workers developers can't sit here and do their own thing now this takes me into the indie realm which is far different nowadays because most people still need some type of publishing house to really sit here and appeal to the mass markets what has come up is the origin system steam uh, Despera, you have itch.io, you have um, G, the Game Jam, Game Jolt, I believe, you have also GOG. I mean, you have different choices, but it's really, if you want to look into it, there are digital monopolies that have formed. The biggest ones happen to be Origin as well as Steam, but you can also opt out of those and be an indie developer of the type that goes into pixelated games and many other things now this is specifically for the PC market because that's the one that I know the most in terms of the consoles you have to go with PS4 as well as Xbox one and the reason being they have different arcade modes but I don't know anything about them so I can't comment on them so the developer market of developers is usually for the smaller more amateurish crowd you won't get a super giant games now and remember super giant games is made up of nine former EA employees they had the experience and then they decided to sit here and move in and make their own little titles when they already had a lot of funds and resources to put into these types of things what you're looking at is when you're an indie developer in any way shape or form you have to sit here and market your ass off you have to make a really good game and if you're going to make a good game you have to appeal to the public while sitting here and deciding where you want to sit here and furnish it gone are really the days of the cave story who which was one guy making five years of development you don't have as many people sitting here and talking about those types of developments. They still happen, but it's rarer and rarer because of the ease of use and the vast swaths of land that have been owned by, say, a Steam or Game or a GOG or whatever. Even the Humble Indie Bundle. I, nowadays, it's not quite the same thing that it used to be. So, my point here is 
if you're going to look into the developing industry, you have to take these considerations into mind. When you look into the big big guys, the triple A's, and you're looking into the developers, you have to sit here and make that distinction from the indie developers who have different challenges that they face no matter which industry that you're talking about. Especially in the gaming industry, you have to look at them very different. You have to look at their contra uh, conflicts and struggles because they're going to be very different for what you need to sit here and talk about. This is something that a lot of journalists tend to miss, particularly what is going on in regards to the gaming industry. Now, when I make my formal argument, I'll go into this much more, but this is just, again, a main overview so that way you can see it and make your own decisions how you want to cover these types of industry standards. And hopefully this can sit here and try to improve the gaming industry by diagnosing that developers are the backbone of the industry and exactly why.